What's going on, guys? My name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Tunage Tuesday here on the Breakdown Channel. And with today's episode, we are going to be doing a lyric breakdown. We are going to be discussing Blue Oyster Cult's hit song, Don't Fear the Reaper. Released in 1976 off of their Agents of Fortune album, Blue Oyster Cult's hit song, Don't Fear the Reaper, has been a song for a long time that has divided people. It's been kind of a controversial song as to what the meaning of the lyrics truly are. And in this video right here, I'm going to hopefully break down some of the confusion that's associated with this song. Many people speculate that this song is a song that kind of advocates suicide. And for me, uh, I could definitely understand where people would get that idea from. However, the song means something a little different for me personally. So right as we jump into the song, we hear the lyrics. All our times have come, here but now they're gone. Seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the wind, the sun, or the rain. We can be like they are. Come on, baby, don't fear the reaper. Baby, take my hand, don't fear the reaper. We'll be able to fly. Don't fear the reaper. Baby, I'm your man. So jumping right into the song lyrically, um, what's interesting is the lyrics themselves set up a lot of atmosphere that complements the atmospheric music present in the song. The guitars at times kind of have a heavy quality to them. Uh, a lot of people speculate that Blue Easter Cult was one of the first true heavy metal bands in music. And it's interesting to hear the heavy elements in this song mixed with the atmospheric elements in this song because it really adds a sense of doom and atmosphere that a lot of songs back in the 70s didn't really have. And this song in particular, with tackling the subject of death as a whole, I think needed to have that kind of vibe about it. And the lyrics definitely complement that particular style and direction the band chose to go in. However, a lot of people speculate that this song is darker than it really is. For me personally, the first verse of this song really kind of cements what this song is about. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to skip forward to the second verse that is a little more controversial for people. Valentine is done, here but now they're gone. Romeo and Juliet are together in eternity. 40,000 men and women every day, like Romeo and Juliet, 40,000 men and women every day, redefine happiness. Another 40,000 coming every day, we can be like they are. A lot of people take this particular verse and the lyrics in it as an advocacy for suicide. Um, I've talked to many, many people who think that this song itself really is trying to say, look, just forget the worries and woes of this world and just embrace death and embrace the other side because the other side is better. You don't have to deal with your issues there. You don't have to confront them. Just let's take off and let's fly into the other side. However, I do not feel that this is what the song is trying to portray or is actually about. Going back to the first verse, when you hear the words, seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the wind the sun or the rain, what I interpret that as is death is a normal part of life. Death is always going to be present. Death is going to be the next step that everybody is going to take eventually in their lifetime. And instead of sitting around and worrying about it all the time, we need to be more like the seasons, the sun, the rain. We need to be a part of this world and not really sit down and sit amongst our anxieties and our fears as to what death may bring with it. Really what the song is saying, and, and, they, and they say this a lot in the vocals that are bouncing around in the background now, we can be like they are, as it's said in the song. Um, what that is saying to me is, look, we can be like the wind, we can be like the sun and the rain, we can be a part of this world, be a, uh, a crucial element in this world, experience all that it has to offer, and not have to sit around and worry about 
Where are we going to go when we die? What's going to happen to us when we die? It's not something that we should focus on. Instead, what we should understand is that death is a normal part of life, and when it happens, you don't need to be afraid of it because you're going on the next part of the journey of life. You might be going to an afterlife. You might not be going anywhere at all, depending on what you believe. However, it's not something that you have to worry about because you have no control over it. Oftentimes, a lot of people sit around and they worry about, am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? Am I going to see my loved ones? Am I going to uh, be able to maintain the things that I had in my previous life? What this song kind of tackles is stop sitting down and worrying about where you're going to end up because you have no control over it. You're going to be there no matter what. Instead, live your life to the fullest, live amongst this planet, be one with the planet and its other inhabitants and everything that consists of life. And when that next step and that next journey comes, embrace it, fly with it. Go with it into the sunset and see where it may or may not take you. And it's funny to hear that the lead singer, Buck Dharma, really explained this when he was asked about this song uh, in great detail, because a lot of people always came to him saying that they thought it was a song that advocated suicide, and he kind of was disgusted at that idea. And most people took that line with the whole Romeo and Juliet are together in eternity part very literally as if they're saying, oh, well, those guys killed each other and now they're, you know, they're together. So yeah, it's, it is advocating suicide. Instead, what he was saying was, no, what I meant with that is these people are now together. They don't have to be afraid anymore because they're together for forever and there's nothing that they need to worry about. It was, he was trying to make it so the song seemed like the ultimate love song, really. And I really feel like this point is brought across pretty well in the final verse and the final chorus of the song. Love of two is one, here but now they're gone. Came the last night of sadness, and it was clear she couldn't go on. The door was open, and the wind appeared, the candles blew and then disappeared. The curtains flew, and then he appeared, saying, don't be afraid. Come on, baby. And she had no fear. And she ran to him, then she started to fly. She looked backward and said goodbye. She had become like they are. She had taken his hand. She had become like they are. Come on, baby, don't fear the reaper. Uh, Again, at the end of this song right here, it really ties in the whole idea that this is kind of a, a love song that is about love that transcends space, time, and dimensions. And it's kind of alluded to that this particular uh, person at the end of the song may have lost a loved one was on the uh, on death's door and then embraced the reaper uh, death if you will um, at the end of her life without fear knowing that she was going to go on to the next step the next phase and possibly see the person that she had loved uh, in her her life so it's really interesting to me to hear people say that, oh, this song's really dark and it's about suicide advocacy and yada, 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 when in actuality, the song for me is very hopeful. Uh, it's very it's very thought-provoking for me. Um, the whole idea that you don't need to be afraid of death, you need to just go throughout life, experience as much as you can, and then whatever happens, happens. This has always been something that I've lived by personally, and uh, I really liked hearing it in a song. I've always really enjoyed listening to this song, uh, but only over the last few years have I really come to appreciate it from a lyrical standpoint. Uh, It's probably, in my opinion, one of the best written songs of the 70s, and as you can tell, has gone on to influence bands like Ghosts that we have nowadays with that dark yet melodic um, rock-infused music. So it's really cool to see that Blue Oyster Cult still has had a noticeable impact on music today. But what did you guys think? Uh, Am I off base with some of my ideas, my hypothesis? Um, 
What do you guys think the song is about? I'd love to have a discussion with you guys in the comment section below. So please feel free to leave a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out immensely, as well as subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. Every Tuesday, I will be posting a video focused on music, and every Wednesday, I'll be posting a video focused on video games, and pretty soon here, every weekend, I will be uh, posting a video, maybe a video review, maybe a video essay focused on film because film is another passion of mine that I absolutely love. And be on the lookout this weekend for an early review of Spider-Man Homecoming. I will be posting that uh, as soon as I see it uh, this Wednesday. So please be on the lookout for that. Guys, my name has been Corey Kamori. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time.